This is the seventh video that I am able to bring to you describing what's going on here at General Convention. If you listened to the sixth video, I said that yesterday was a kind of in-between day, mostly courtesy resolutions, not a lot that was substantive. Well, today we got into much more substantive territory. Sort of good news in the House of Deputies, not so good news in the House of Bishops. In the House of Deputies, all of the evangelism resolutions that were presented by the committee that I chaired along with a group of other people all passed. Significant money for organizing new efforts at evangelism through digital media, financial support for people who are interested in starting some new church plants, uh, the call for an evangelism summit that would bring together evangelists from around the country to get to know each other, share resources, and, do, and issue a report to the wider church, something, as many of you know, that has not gotten much attention in these past few years, certainly has gotten a lot of attention here at General Convention. So in many ways, when it comes to evangelism, it really is a new day in the life of the Episcopal Church. I just, I kept seeing tweets all day from various people in the House of Deputies, just thrilled at the way those resolutions were passing. So, deputies, it was a great day. Bishops, not so much. Uh, after passing a resolution to take more seriously issues of climate change, uh, we got into some substantive issues around marriage. As you know, there were plenty of proposals that were put up, both to call for a change in marriage canons, which would in essence make marriage more of a gender neutral institution, as well as several uh, liturgical rites for the marriage of same-sex couples. There was a huge amount of debate on both of those resolutions. Um, both of those resolutions in some form passed. So we now actually have a canon which makes the definition of marriage more gender neutral rather than specific to being a man and a woman. We also have a marriage right that can be performed uh, that has been passed as an authorized right for trial use. The provisions for that right are the following, that all of the other recommendations in terms of being baptized Christians, affirming lifelong commitments, are still in place. And what was not done was no effort was made to undercut the role of the bishop as chief liturgical officer, which means any authorized rights for trial use have to have the permission of the bishop uh, for any clergy person who is under that bishop's care to be able to perform those rights. If a priest chooses to perform those rights without the permission of the bishop, at that point, that priest has violated both the national canon that was just passed, as well as our own diocesan canons that make that very, very clear. So obviously I have some work ahead of me to try to think about how will we move forward with this as the Diocese of Central Florida. As you know, because I've said this on numerous occasions, I do not support in any way, either from a theological standpoint or from a biblical standpoint, a redefinition of marriage as something other than the lifelong commitment of one man and one woman. It seems to me the 1979 prayer book definition of marriage is very, very clear. And we have made what is now a significant departure from that understanding of marriage. The prayer book has not changed. That's still as it stands. But these authorized rights for trial use, which means if the bishop grants permission and a local priest wants to do it, he can choose or she one of those rights to perform the wedding for a same-sex couple. So that's where we stand right now. That actually happened pretty much at the close of the day. And so what I will want to do is go back and look at those canons very, very carefully, as well as to read through the rites themselves and think about what kind of impact they might have on the Diocese of Central Florida. You should know that joining me in opposing those rights was the Bishop of Florida, Peter Eaton, of Southeast Florida voted yes. And in fact, um, some kind of same-sex blessing has been going on under his predecessor, Leo Frati, for quite some time. So, and that's a part of what we're going to do is that we bishops in Florida will be putting our heads together 
to try to figure out if there's a way that we can deal with this because we're all so close together. So all of that remains to be seen. I continue to urge you uh, to pray for us as we work through these things together. There's still plenty more to be dealt with. We actually have four more days of um, legislation to deal with and then we'll finally conclude Friday night. So that is my report. Please keep, stay tuned. Please continue to pray for us. And uh, I look forward to seeing people when I get back in Central Florida. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.